All right, and we're rolling. Oh, that's my laptop. Man. <laughs> that's All right, we're on. We're on live. We're on? Yeah, what's good, everybody? Uh, welcome to episode two of the Creative Pit. Uh, I'm Gra Robert Graphite Waters. We got... <laughs> <laughs> He's all lost there. Nah, yeah, boy, John Darko yeah. Chapman. <laughs> what a heck of a cue there, guy. Man. Um, yeah, man. Sorry, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. We're trying to work out um putting in some new things, and the new things ain't working, of course. So technical difficulties, we do apologize. But um, yeah, yeah, we're here to start the new show and second episode. And what's been up, man? Not too much, man. Just uh shooting trying to trying to get work done um same old stuff as every as, as shooting as every week lately um yeah we actually just shot a i shot a young lady um this evening um at a hotel and i have a bunch of edits coming out um but yeah we at just a did a we did, yeah we just did a cool hotel shoot just you know the, the a boudoir thing so it was it was cool man it came out really nice that's what's up yeah. yeah, same here. Shooting. Um, just had a shoot was it a day ago. Was it a day ago or two days ago? I'm totally Tuesday. What, what's today? Thursday. Jesus. Today two days ago. Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> uh with uh just 10. He's a, a really, really serious up and coming designer. I actually met him when I was in France and mm. um been shooting with him ever since. And he's been blowing up, man. So he um He's uh, shooting for a whole bunch of things. He, shot for a lot. he did a design thing for NAACP. He did something, I think, that is uh, – he does a lot of stuff for Billboard. He's one of the um, main uh, designers for uh, the National Designers Whatever Association. And he does a bunch of stuff. So he's, he's doing very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 200K followers. And so stuff. yeah man real good dude super super nice guy man and this is his first time coming down to my studio and coming down to philly so i'm usually nice. like in new york or wherever shooting him or he sends me stuff so this is the first yeah. time like he came down yeah, to my studio okay. and we shot man so yeah, it went well man so um you know that was about it just hustling and working i gotta shoot tomorrow <laughs> i'm tired and i still gotta shoot so keep it going that's what's up, man. So yeah, um, trying to think anything anything new in the news this uh, this this week. I don't know if there's anything going on photography wise. Uh, photography wise, nah, not too much. Um, who's bringing out a new camera in the Canon or something? Yeah, the uh, the R five C is coming out yeah. soon. I think so. Um, I'm, I'm looking at that one. That that might be that might be my my camera. We'll see. I forgot you're a Canon guy. I'm a Canon guy, man. I'm a Canon guy. <laughs> so he is. So <laughs> can't hate on Sony. I can't. I can't hate on them. But yeah, the the new stuff that Canon's doing, man, I I, I dig it. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, they stuck, stuck a stuck a fan on the back of it so that 8K don't have everybody overheating anymore. So how big is the camera now? So from what I've seen, um, the people who've talked about it, like the people who've reviewed it, say that it's not too much bigger. Like it doesn't feel like odd in your hand so mm. it's still like a regular uh like a regular camera like you can still use it for stills and everything like that apparently they really the only thing it doesn't have is the ibis on it so there's no there's no stabilization but other than that you it's it's like a it's like a better video it's more video centric r5 but there's no stabilization yeah there's no image stabilization yeah so how's it a better video camera that don't make no sense I guess it, it's it's more more along the lines with the cinema cameras do. So you know you, you get a you get a gimbal or something. I don't know. Yeah, so I, cinema do, cameras. especially with the new stabilization technologies coming out, like what Sony did, like what's in the FX3. Yeah, I think you can do it in the FX6, or you got to get a, a um, firmware upgrade. But like you can now like shoot basically handheld, throw it into Sony system, whatever editing software they got now. And mm -hmm. um, you know, do 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 some magic with the algorithm, and it makes everything look like a perfect gimbal. Like I tried it out once, and like yeah, it's, it's, it's real shit. It takes a long time for the, the yeah. you know all the programming and everything, but it's yeah. good. So I, I, was, I don't know. Th to this day and age, like to me, certain things with video cameras in this day and age, if they they don't have those things going on immediately, as far mm -hmm. as like eye focus eye tracking system so on and so forth mm -hmm. uh stabilization so on and so forth 
then they cutting corners in this BS. <laughs> I kind of don't like real because like at this point where the technology is and that's where everything's going. The idea is to get things where everything you don't need to have a crazy rig and follow focus and all this other stuff. You know what I mean? Like like right. it's going to be very very soon where cinema cameras are autofocus. Have those things. Cinema yeah, cameras have, have never those been things. cinema lenses. I should say have never been autofocus. Right. But um, it's coming. And it should. Yeah. You know what I mean, well, it's that, that. I mean, that may put put them out of reach for a lot of people again, because, you know, the 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 non autofocus lenses are less expensive and cinema lenses are already, you know, dumb expensive. So adding autofocus into those is it, it might be a little silly. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, unless you're in that field. Then, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, if, you, if, it, if that's where you then, make your money, you'll you'll pay for it. Then I need yeah. that boy. <laughs> that's facts. What I do, I need that boy. Yeah, because you know I mean? especially like shooting commercials and music videos, and like stuff where you're moving really, really fast. Mm -hmm. The more you can just slap a lens on and go, you don't got to do all this extra stuff. Makes yeah, all, it's, all it's, the difference in the world. Speed is the name of the game now. Like everybody wants faster, faster, faster. So yeah, it's, microwave it's generation. Definitely, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, man. So we'll talk more later. We'll get into a few things. We'll try and you know keep the the scale down a little bit with everything. Is there anybody in the chat? What's going on? Nobody yeah, we got Josh here. Uh, we have Carl. What up, Josh? Why can't I what see the chat? Saying? I'm not sure. Does it say comments on the side for you? That's why I ain't hear comments. I need that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you what up, it. Josh? What's going on? We got Josh. We, we got, got Carl. Carl's here. And this. All right. Definitely we'll say what's up in the chat. Uh, here, let me let me toss some of these up. Uh, there we go. There better be some more people up in here soon. Yeah, we got a few. All those messages and everything I sent out. Granted, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we got to do and set up and YouTube stuff. We kept it real simple and light while we were starting off. Yeah. But oh yeah. The uh the lidar focus rig. That's a uh, that's on that um that's on what you call it. It's, uh, DJI's uh new cinema camera. That the one with the with the the goose neck on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the only that, thing that with the lidar, John, and all that, like you got to have a really slight lens on it and all that other mm. stuff, and yeah, it's okay. But once again, like we need full, yeah. ridiculously big, expensive cinema lenses, autofocus. It's about that. Time. <laughs> it's coming. I mean, I get sure why they weren't for a long time for obvious reasons, but like the technology is just so on point now. Like, I mean, that's the main reason I just got an fx6 was mm -hmm. because of the autofocus and the fact i can just slap on a, a you know a whatever autofocus lens you know prime lens whatever and mm -hmm. be able to knock out whatever i need to knock out video you know what i mean even though it's not really a traditional cinema lens it's, you know, it's a photography lens but it does the trick and it just you know speeds up time so much fast you know when i'm shooting um i shoot for a lot of like fitness stuff and a lot mm -hmm. of times, like, I'm under a timetable because they got to get me in, get what needs to be done before they bring in client, you know, people that are in the gym or whatever um, within the health club and stuff. So a lot of times, like, I got to move fast. You know what I mean? Or same with music right. videos and stuff. Like, it's it's fast. Yeah, sometimes it's, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of time constraints. Yeah. Yeah. When you're in those situations, uh, you got to be in and out sometimes. So yeah, yeah, it's it's, the faster you can slap on a lens and go, the better. So it's coming. I know it's coming. Yeah. But... But yeah, and hearing that that Canon made a uh, camera that don't got no stabilization. I, I, I don't yeah. know about that. Canon, I mean, Canon's known for cutting the corners or or keeping stuff, you know, away from you know their their lenses it or their their bodies. Magic. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, that's because like all right, it's the last thing I'm gonna say because like, everybody's swearing by black magic, and I don't hate on black magic. I like black mm. magic some stuff are cheaper but because they're so cheap they cut corners and it's like my um assistant uh this thing we just shot with justin he shot with the black magic and um we just i noticed immediately like once he got higher into the isos that thing started acting weird oh yeah, yeah i mean and then it works with a universal shutter which gets like really weird because like he started his shutter speed started going like real crazy and i was like and it's still maintained but it was just really weird because you know usually you're used to adjusting your shutter within you know two times of whatever the frame rate and whatever so it, like, it was just seeing what, how it worked i was like that's weird and um you know it's, it's, it's you know it's a cool camera it was still cool it still did right. the job for sure i couldn't do it i was still photographing you know but um you know 
it was interesting. So I'm actually getting ready to play with his footage later and re edit mm. some stuff and teach him some more stuff. Yeah, it was some of his uh, you know, you know, all the color grading is not the easiest thing to learn. So, no, you know, I'm gonna go through some more things with him with that and up it a bit. That's what's up. All right, so we want to introduce our guests for this week, yes, sir. So, this is your guy, uh, Carl. Uh, yeah, you I got what's it gotta be my guy? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, guy. He's, he's, yeah, well, he, he is, is the guy, guy. He, he is the guy. Let's start true. right there, right? <laughs> he is, he is the guy. all right. <laughs> so, shout out real quick. One of is just my camera. Shout out to uh, Carl M. Lee. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and, and kind of give you a little background on Carl, Carl is basically um, a very, very talented fashion photographer. Uh, I don't want to say he specializes in couture, he does a little bit of it all. But um, I know a lot of his work that I've seen and, and some of the people that I've known he's worked with has been more based on the couture uh, style of fashion and things like that. For those of you who don't know what couture is, couture is more of uh, art, fashion, uh, exquisite. I'm, I'm, I think it stands for something. It's a word, a French word or something. I totally forget. I don't know. But, <laughs> but um, you know, me and Carl um, both worked and we, that's kind of somewhat how we know each other is from um, Rest in Peace. I'm um, sorry she passed. Uh, Happy Couture. Uh, Happy mm -hmm. Couture. Um, I think you heard me mention before when uh, we did some stuff with Josh um, and Josh met Happy and so forth. She's amazingly, amazingly talented uh, fashion designer that did these amazing art piece um, style uh, fashion wardrobes and dresses and all these amazing things that she created. And, you know, Happy was the type she would come in with like bags of stuff and just create all kinds of stuff. And me, you'll hear me and Carl talk more about it later. I ain't going to get too much into it now. But, um, you know, just just his style and how he works with that and so forth um, is really not much of what I've seen. I mean, I'm just some photographers I've seen play with that and stuff like that. But Carl's design with it and some of the stuff that he creates is freaking amazing, man. Like he really yeah. is like on that level as far as just high-end fashion and what high-end fashion looks like and so forth so you know we're going to bring him on and talk more about that and and just uh the process and his career and everything else so go from there thanks all right so let's bring carl on uh how's it going what up guys what up guys what's up man you know already, man. We working photographers out here. <laughs> yes, sir. Hopefully, I did you justice on the introduction. Oh, I did a little no, good job. You covered, you covered a good range of things. You definitely <laughs> covered a good range of things. Cool. So, yeah, man. Start off and um, tell us a little bit just about your background. Just a little bit about how you uh, got into fashion and photography and you know just the whole gamut. So basically, I started off. Um, I want to say my photography career probably comes from me coming from Louisiana. Um, I come from Louisiana, uh, Franklin, Louisiana. We call it the bottom, you know, and um, Cajun country, pretty much. Gotcha. And uh, I grew up, I grew up basically, you know, I was a nerd. I wasn't into fashion and stuff like that. Um, I didn't have no idea what I was doing. And my cousin taught me everything. My cousin mm. taught me how to put outfits together, taught me how to go to the dollar store and make outfits, you know? Mm. And um, pretty much from there, I learned about colors and stuff like that. Um, and um, just basically grew from there. And, and then later on in life, pretty much, um, I used to buy these cameras. You know, I used to buy these cameras. I... I I didn't know what I was doing, but I would take my pictures all the time and I would, um, you know, I would think, OK, I bought a camera. It was eight megapixels. Then I would look at I would look at the pictures and I'd be like something wrong. I think I need some more pixels. Then I would buy another camera, 14 pixels, 12 pixels. I'm like, I need more pixels. I need to yeah. buy a real <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> Definitely all been there. But too afraid to learn, too afraid to learn something new held me back for a long period of time. Mm. And um, and then finally one day, um, my roommate, he was like, yo, we need to shoot my, 
my son and uh, we went to Best Buy and we bought a T2i. And um, that camera was $800. That was a lot of money back in the day. And then um, we had to figure out how to make that money back. And uh, lo and behold, I started shooting. I started shooting in a club, probably like a lot of photographers. Um, mm -hmm. I started shooting off and I started shooting in a club. And uh, believe it or not, no races toward anybody, but I, I was shooting Mexicans. And um, you was doing mean, the Mexican parties, man. I did the <laughs> yeah, I was in the Spanish parties. <laughs> the quesadillas and all that. <laughs> yeah, I was in the Spanish parties. <laughs> man. And, um, and um, yeah, so um, I started doing that a lot. And um, before you know it, I was. I was bringing all the different modifiers to the club. Like I pretty, the, the, the owner told me this side of the club is yours. Do whatever you want. Hmm. And um, I started experimenting with a lot of different modifiers from constant light. Sometimes he would come in there. I have the 70, you know, the 70, uh, the seven inch uh, umbrella. I have, two soft boxes, I have octa boxes going, I have I have a lot of different things and um, I was actually learning lighting and I didn't even know I was learning lighting but I was just trying different things, yeah. Mm. That's what's up. Okay. Yeah, I started Yeah, yeah. I, started, I started with that T2i too, man. I, I remember that camera well. That was one yeah. of my first. I remember, I remember, I think the first time, like when I was like really starting to get into photography and digital cameras, especially, like, I mean, I was always doing video and stuff before. And then like the, the Canon's and the first EOS is, I remember, I remember it was just EOS before it would even got into like the T's and all that mm -hmm. was coming out and like people started swearing by them and we were like, man, eh, what's that? And then, and then, um, uh, who, who was the dude back in the day? Who was the first, the, the English dude? That came out and was like doing music videos and stuff, and people were like, "Yo!" and like the quality yeah. with these little cameras. Was he using Bloom. the five D? Bloom, Philip Bloom. Was he using like the five D Mark II and stuff back then? No, nah, this is way before that. Philip Bloom was using this was like back like when the T three first came out and all that mm. kind of stuff, and I think even before then. And like you know, he was the first to really shoot like a high end looking video with the little canon cameras and that was like the change that was the drift that was everybody was like oh we going this way because <laughs> i remember i'll never forget i remember this was back when we were still using like the big three chip cameras and mm -hmm. um the panasonics and all that and i remember we were shooting a music video we shot a music video for this like uh christian rapper or something it was a long time ago and we shot the whole video and everything else right and they were happy blah blah blah, blah. then we didn't hear from them for a while and then all of a sudden, we saw their video on BET, and it was the same exact video we shot, like shot for shot, but they shot it with the Canon instead. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and we were sitting there like, did they just, they just <laughs> ain't that a bad? <laughs> <laughs> and that, yeah, that was the first time like we realized like the the, the huge shift in you know the old school video to what it is now. I hmm. think I think the uh the seven D the seven D laid the groundwork. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the 7D It might have been the seven D. I think it was the seven D. Yeah, yeah, the seven D. Yeah, that, that was a classic camera for a long period of time. It was. Yeah. It's, time. it's crazy because the the T two I could do everything the seven D could do. It was just that you know the seven D had that nice body that the the steel frame and everything, but the yeah. picture quality was exactly the same. Sensor was the same. Everything was the same. So well, you more, had more. You had more with the seven D. You had uh, more fo focus points because yeah. Uh, yeah. I would be in a club. I would be in a club with my T my T two I, and <laughs> I would be trying to lock in in the dark, and it wouldn't. <laughs> you had to hit that, that center point, point and move it. it. <laughs> yeah, this made me jump to the to the seven uh, D, and I was like, man, I can't. Because I was making money in the club, you know, mm. I was making, uh, you know, everybody, I'm sure everybody was doing it. Like, you know, you had to be good right on the spot, you know, um, yeah. uh, you know, you set up your little printing area. Um, and as you take the shots, you you run them through, um, you run them through the laptop. And then what I did was because 
uh, Spanish people, if they don't know you, they're not going to let you just take their picture like that. Yeah. So I had to be kind of clever. And um, what I did was I actually I bought a 40-inch TV to the club. And um, I set the TV on the table, and they would pass by, and they would be like, I want to be on TV. Like, they thought it was a real, like, like a show, you know? Mm. And then um, I would put my images, I would put my images as I'm taking them and I would sell them for like $5. And um, before you know it, man, I made my first year in the club, I made $15,000. Nice. Selling pictures for $5. And then the next year I doubled that. So, um, yeah, man, that was that seven D. That seven D was like my seven D and my twenty four to seven. Change the game, man. It really changed the game. Change the game. I made, yeah, I made that back. I made that money back fast with them with them two items. The twenty four to seventy was just all around lens for me, and it worked perfect in the club. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, how did tell us a little bit about how? you made the jump from, you know, starting off how a lot of photographers start off and, and, you know, the kind of humble beginnings and everything to doing what you do now, which is, is this amazing, you know, crazy um, tour type of fashion. And like, like mm -hmm. dude, I see some of your work and I'm just like, I would never have even come up with that. So, <laughs> I was like, I was so showing Rob and I'm sorry. So, so believe it or not, man, believe it or not, um and uh Josh could probably tell you because Josh on him. Um, me and Josh did a shoot together too. I did uh, not but, know you knew Josh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and Josh, me and me and Josh, believe it or not, me and Josh, uh, we accidentally ran into each other because what happened was I shot his girlfriend. His girlfriend used to come to this to the Spanish night at the club. Jenny. Um uh, no, his first, his very first girl. Uh, okay. <laughs> and and, so well. and uh, she used to come to the club. And um, I didn't know him at the time. I didn't even know nothing about him. And um, one day um, I went to have a conversation with her and Josh was there at the, at Barnes and Nobles. And um, we was like, yo, we was like, we was like, what's up, man? Yo, he was like, yo, I, yo, I, I see you do photography. We, we chopped it up. And next thing you know, yo, I need to be doing a shoot with you, man. Yo, come come by the house. Next thing you know, we was, we was, we was working together, you know? That's what's we up, man. Together. I did not know you knew Josh for that long. That's awesome, man. Yeah, small man. world, bro. It's a small <laughs> world. I'm telling you. Yeah, man. And, and you know, like, um, um, but back to what I was saying, like, I just, I just started really, uh, uh, you know, practicing in the club. And next thing you know, I, I always knew I wanted to do fashion because I, you know, I'm, I was always into fashion. So I, mm -hmm. it just pulled me in that direction. And, um, and then, um, you know, slowly, but surely I started submitting stuff to magazines and, um, when I submitted stuff to magazine, I got a lot of notes and I got a lot of reality checks, you know, like, um, uh, like I was telling you, John, you know, I used to do a lot of composites. I used to do, I used to do that a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, um, when I was submitting that type of stuff to magazine, I got a lot of pushback, like, hmm. no, 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 no. My, my inbox was just filled with notes. And, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, one day I went to see, um, I used, actually, I'm sorry. Let me back up for a second. I used to cry at night because I, <laughs> oh, like, yeah, you know, I used to cry at night because I wasn't good enough. For real, mm -hmm. for real. I feel like, I felt like I suck. I really suck. I could be honest with myself because I'm the, I'm the worst critic for myself and for my work. Um, mm -hmm. But I would tell them, I would say to myself, man, I suck. I really suck. And um, then, then that's when, um, that's when, that's when I would, um, oh man, what happened? 
Did he freeze? No, no, he just he froze. Did he freeze? I think he froze. I... Uh... You there, Carl? Yeah, I'm coming back. Hold on one second. There you go. There you go. There you go. All good. All good. Oh, hold on. Did he? Do we lose him on? Okay. There we go. What happened? Hold on. We lost him for a second. He went out. I think he went out and came back in. Because I got two Carls now. Uh, give us just a moment. We're having some technical difficulties. Make sure that we get him back. Well, Carl disappeared back. for a second. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man, I, I'll say that he's definitely uh, yeah. talking the struggle, man. Uh, oh, I think man. every photographer, every creative period, man, that is worth their grain of salt. Um, goes through that, goes through their their trials and tribulations to to figure out where their niche is, to figure out where their lane is, to figure out mm-hmm. where their talent really lies, to figure out what they want to do and what they become good at. Lord knows I go through it. I still go through it to this day, man. You yeah. know, and and I do some of the composite work and all the other stuff. And it's like I still have those times. You know what I mean? It's, it's especially now with with social media. And everything mm-hmm. else, and there's so much talent out there, and there's so many talented people. And like I'll be seeing pictures sometimes, I'll be like, Thanks to the <laughs> just, I'm just put my, I want to put my camera over here in a cabinet. We're gonna lock yeah, this up, I'll never touch it again. It's it's, <laughs> I, it's it's funny, like it's it strikes me how similar you know his his startup story and mine are. Like I started a lot in you know in club work, doing that kind of thing. That's how I learned. You know, I think that's how a lot of people learn. It's a one yeah. of a really great way to learn is learning to shoot in dark environments like a club like that. That's mm-hmm. that's that's how I learned settings and how I learned to you know adjust and do stuff on the fly. Um, it's 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 very similar. Um, yeah. But yeah. I never I never did the club type stuff. Like during mm-hmm. that time, I was doing more video and film stuff. So I never really got into. I didn't do photography till a lot later. Um, Hmm. as far as like taking it seriously and everything else. Um, But yeah, I I definitely understand the struggle and so forth. And it's funny, I I was very opposite. I was very, you know, I I started in in video and all that kind of stuff. There we go. He's backstage, he says. Hold on. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can. So we're going to, we're going to kick the two that are in here. So I ended up, um, See what happens Um, if he comes back in. Doing the stuff I was doing. And then when I finally got into more photography, uh, I started realizing how little I knew. You know what I mean? And and I learned that I learned a really bad way. (laughs) I was doing my first wedding. And and I wasn't really used to strobes. Uh, And I was still, you know, I was more constant light, more video and all that kind of stuff. And I thought I could get away with it. And that was really before DSLRs and stuff. Um, got to where the point to, to, to the high ISO and everything. So mm-hmm. like my pictures came out horrible <laughs> and I had like, luckily I was really good at editing. I had to, bro, when I tell you, uh, I spent hours trying to fix them pictures, bro. Oh my Ooh. gosh. It was so bad. I don't even I, think I have those pictures. I don't want to find those pictures. Dude, I, <laughs> I, most of, most of my early pictures are gone. Um, I, I lost a hard drive and most of my early pictures for the first like three or four years that I was shooting are gone now. Um, but yeah, same thing. Like I, the, the, you know, shooting, shooting, um, like I started out with that, you know, the, the old 18 or 18 to, to 55 and stuff like that. And trying to figure out why my pictures with those were terrible. Like I couldn't get, you know, in low light and it just couldn't do anything. And then a friend of mine at work, um, a guy named Pierce, he he uh, he let me see his 85 millimeter lens. And that changed my life right there. Like when I when I shot through his 85 and I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like <laughs> could everything is out of focus. Like the, the, the background was just like buttery. So I was like, so it's the lens that does this. Like it's not like I wasn't doing something wrong. I just didn't have the right glass. And then I had an 85 and I was shooting clubs with an 85. So I was like all close up and everything like it is. It, it was a whole thing. But yeah, man, like that, that completely changed the way that I shoot. Yeah, It is it's crazy how, you know, some, some people, especially, and then especially when you get in the entertainment business and some other stuff, some like hollows, like, like you're so looked upon or like, oh, he's just a photographer. And they don't realize like how much goes oh. into 
and they think it's just like you know click and one button and there you go oh my god and like the amount bro, of- it's so much discovery so much learning so much oh my hustling. gosh Every you know what of stuff you have to learn yeah go ahead girl you know what you know what shooting in the club shooting in the club actually brought out a lot of creativity for me because you had to be good on the spot because mm-hmm. I'm selling pictures so so you would run through a random amount of different poses with different people, couples, different things like that. And all this stuff was just like straight battleground testing for me, you know, like, uh, and later on down the line, as I'm starting to branch out from the club scene and do shoots and stuff like that, that's when, that's when, um, you know, uh, I looked at Lindsay Adler, Lindsay Adler, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. I look. I said to myself, I need a role model, like mm-hmm. a role model, like a big brother, like a big sister, whatever. But I need someone that really actually understand lighting. And um, um, oh, Lindsay, Lindsay broke she it down. Stuff. <laughs> broke it down. I went and I paid. Um, I think at the time her class was like six hundred dollars or something like that. I went mm-hmm. to New York and I took one of her class. Oh man, and I when? Tell you, bro, oh, wow. when I took one of her classes, uh, and she did one thing that I was not doing. Guess what that was? What? When she rolled down that piece of paper, she uh, actually rolled down the paper because up until that point, I was shooting on, on vinyl. Uh, I was <laughs> shooting on paper. I was. Sho- I mean, I was shooting on like fabrics. I was shooting on. Uh, mm, you know what? That's something that I didn't even think about. But yeah, like that changed a lot for me too. Like when I started shooting on paper. paper. Yeah, because I, I was doing the muslins. I was doing the, um, you know, like any kind of fabric. Yes, I. that's something that never, like, until I, just now, like I, I didn't really think about that. But that changed a keep, whole lot for me. If you want to keep your work clean, this is for photographers. If you want to mm-hmm. keep your work clean, seamless paper is the way to go. And exactly. what's so neat about seamless paper? Because Lindsay, um, I'm looking at Lindsay doing this, and I'm like, I do everything she's doing, like with the mm-hmm. movement of the material, the movement of the dresses. I do all this, but I never thought about buying seamless paper and shoot on that. And um, that's when the light bulb went off, and I was mm-hmm. like, okay, you know, I could do this. You know, I could really, really, I could really, you know. And also, too, fashion gives me the freedom. I could do, I could use different type of lighting techniques. I'm not, I'm not stuck to, you know, when I'm shooting, I'm not, I'm not really, really, really technical. I'm more about a, a feel. I, mm. I, I feel, I feel like it's like a whisper, like the model should be doing this. The model should be doing that. So when you look at the pictures where you see the posing, all these different crazy posing, all these different, um, um, it just, it, it height, it, it pushes me. Once I see the, once I see the dress or I see the look, then, then, you know, the model, I, I push her in that direction that I need her to go. And then it makes, it challenges me to put the lighting in place. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna go back. Pull up on um, where where Josh said again. Um, uh, when this you get right to here? the wall where you just yeah, when you get to the yeah. wall where you just feel like you're not on the level, take a break from your norm and shoot something different. Get outside of your box and then come back. Yeah, it's very true, yeah. man. I I think every photographer, every photographer's got well, well every artist. Period. One has a little bit of ego. Yeah, the nice. ego tends to get the best of you at some point. Where you start going, you know, I got this. Especially once you figure out a few things and you start getting, you know, a little thing happening, whether it's your business, whether it's this, whether it's that, some attention, social media, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. You get in your little groove and you're like, all right, I got this. And and you tend to get comfortable. And then before you know it, you know, you get stuck. You start seeing other people's work, whatever, so forth. And then you start realizing you're not as good as you think and self-doubting and all these things come in. When all that stuff starts happening, that's the point when you really need to go. Um, and and I see so many I see so many photographers and, and and filmmakers and videographers and everything, uh, engineers, music producers, music artists, everything, where 
they're still at their beginning. They know they're not that far. And they still get into this, I don't need to learn nothing. Hmm. Or they get into this, uh, like, 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 I'll, I'll sneak and learn on YouTube, but I won't actually take a class. I won't right. actually I'm not reach gonna, out I'm not to someone. Invest. I won't humble myself and do these other things I need to do. Um, and I've been there too. I ain't saying nothing that I, I haven't done myself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we got to get out of that sometimes as creatives. And we got to, yeah. you got to really put yourself up and go, look, man, I'm, you know, you got to humble yourself basically. And you really got to realize you don't know everything. When, you know, you know, when you, when you, when you go about picking out role models that like, for example, because I love fashion, mm. when I look around and I look at other fashion photographers and what they doing, you look at yourself, you, you start. And if you're honest with yourself, you say to yourself, okay, I need to really, really step my game up. I really need, because at the end of the day, this is when you're submitting pictures to magazines, you're mm-hmm. competing with these people, whether you like it or not. You're right. actually competing. And, you know, it's an honor for my pictures to be on covers. I'm not bragging about myself, but it's an honor for me to have my pictures uh-huh. on covers, Um to have my pictures, Grace covers of magazines. And, you know, um, Lindsay taught us to build teams, you know, build mm-hmm. build a team. I have I have makeup artists, I have uh, hairstylists, I have, um, basically I have anything that I need to complete my work because people see my work and other creatives want to join in, right. you know. I right. think it's a, um, I think it's a, a magnetic field that we have with each other. Like, like I spoke to John. I said, John, bro, I wanna, I wanna come and create with you. I wanna be like Michael Jordan, you know. Like, I don't need to have the camera in my hand. I could just come and move a light for you, my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, because, because it's not all about taking the shot. It's about making the shot, mm-hmm. you know. I like I can actually live off the fact when I see John post a picture and I I might have assist, assisted with him or whatever he posts that picture. I'm happy. He don't have to give me credit for it. I I I just feel happy and excited that we made a piece of art together. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I can live with that. I can live with that. It's not um, it's not it's not something that you know, I need to me, 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 me. It's me, me, me. I don't feel like that, you know. So, you know, and I think, I think having that 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 unselfish thing going on, where you know what, I can be honest. Creativity starts with the makeup artist. Mm-hmm. It starts with the hairstylist mm-hmm. because you know they set the tone. Like, because because. I That's agree. True. That's very true. Definitely agree, it's, it's man. I, I will say, man. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead, John. Uh, I'll, I'll add to that a little of, um, you know, the the the, the humbleness of saying like, well, well, let's get into that a little bit. You know, when we were saying of, of gracing magazines and so forth, and that's a very interesting thing in this day and age, especially from a combination of, uh, you know, one big reason why still to this day, a lot of people want to get into photography. Let's keep it real, it's because of fashion. You know, mm-hmm. fashion photography is still a very huge thing in, in, in you know, in the photography world, fashion world, everything else. And, stuff. and it's a hard biz to get into. It's not easy. And, um, you know, because of just how things have changed, the Internet and so forth, it's it's a, just a different ball game. You There's so many different magazines there's so many different companies or so many things, um, all the fashion weeks and designers and. Now that's changed. Retail and fashion and all that's changed. Malls are disappearing. Everything's going online and yep. everything's changing and, and so forth. So tell me a little bit about that. Tell me a little bit about, well, first, um, I'm you glad know, do, you do, do, a little, do a little bragging for me. Tell me a little bit I about like some of the magazines you've been I like in. That. And I like that. Stuff. John, I like that. Because here's why, right? Um, if you want to, and John, I'm sure you're going to, when I say what I'm about to say, you're going to, you're going to jump out your seat on this one. You ready? Oh <laughs> if you want if you want to control what your work look like, 
and feel like you need to put all your fingertips on it from make um photographers need to understand makeup mm. you need to understand i ain't saying you need to be able to do it but you need to understand it. You need to understand because because when you're shooting when you're shooting women you have to understand you have to walk in a woman's shoes a little bit and and, and i'm gonna say this like like for example for a woman to come in front your camera she don't want to have have bad makeup she don't mm -hmm. want to look bad mm -hmm. and also too she cares about her hair she cares about these things and if you're a photographer that just pulls out your camera and says hey stand right here let me start taking some pictures you're gonna miss the whole you're gonna miss the whole thing and that nine times out of ten that female probably won't shoot with you again because you really don't get her you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying you really have to see him and and this goes down to what i'm about to say you want to control the looks you need to go to like um uh i i i purchase a lot of um dresses and different things like that for, mm -hmm. for my own personal projects like you you posted a picture where i had like the parachute mm -hmm. um, pull that up uh, the parachute one? Yeah, I got mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So this this project right here, this project right here, um Which is uh, ridiculous, I, by the way. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, I saw crazy. this and was like, what? <laughs> oh, they never even thought of that. I would have just did the, the typical, like the parachute dress off to the side and whatever. Right. And it's like you took a whole like parachute and just so what I did, right? The background like so what I and did was outside I planned, too. Like I, I, so why this? I planned this whole shoot, right? So I bought the parachute on eBay, and it's a cargo plane parachute. Mm. And uh, basically, what I did was I said to myself, "Yo, this thing is huge, right?" So I said to myself, "I need, I need like a a huge park or." You know what? And I'm driving down the parkway and I think about Lakewood Airport. Hmm. And I go over there and I, I ask the guys, like, could I use your airport? And of course, they told me at first, we'll think about it and get back to you. Right? <laughs> so, so, so that's when the, uh, the owner of the airport called me and said, oh, yeah, come on. You can do whatever you want. Oh, wow. And I do this on the hottest day in the summer. I have, we, we do hair and makeup in the hanger. I ordered all these dresses. This dress that you see is a couture dress that I ordered. Um, and I ordered the Russian hat that you see. Um, that's a real Russian hat. So you put most of this together. Yeah, I put wow. all this together. Oh, and wow. then um, my stylist, my, I had my stylist in the hanger basically you know, dress up the models. We chose the models. I picked all the models that I wanted to do this with. Um, but once again, it's me controlling what I want my work to be seen as and also mm -hmm. to um, putting it in magazine. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? This 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 uh, collection of work, this body of work that I did was featured in 20 magazines throughout wow. the world. And I had out of this, I had seven covers. Nice. From this, from this whole episode, and um, and you know, I almost died shooting this. Actually, to are be honest, you, right? are you still well, yeah, how, how are you, yeah, how are you holding the parachute up? Is it is it on stands right, or is so, this actually wind? So what happened was, all right. So I don't know if people are familiar with parachutes like this, but the way this parachute worked, right? It needs man-made wind. So how I got this idea, I, and when I was in the army, I used to jump out of planes. So that's why I came up with the thought with the with the uh, parachute. But I didn't know that this cargo plane parachute was so huge. And when I took it out on the on the runway for the airport, of course the area is flat and wind can move very easily. And even though it's a hot, humid day, the wind was still breezy enough to actually get this parachute in the air. 
So, so, and it comes with all these different lines. So I had to basically bolt it down, tie it down to like little anchors that they use to tie the planes down. So I tied down to an anchor. And then what I did was I knew that I wanted to use three point lining. Um, um, any photographer, any photographer, um, if foolproof, foolproof lighting, three point lighting. You can't go wrong. I don't care what you're doing. You can't go wrong with three point lighting. Always looks and, good. And um, so I used hard light and three lights. And basically what we did was the air is coming into the parachute and I have three, I have two guys in the back pulling the parachute from the back. And basically I got two more people working it from the front and I'm telling the model, okay, when that wind come, you need to start posing. Okay. Boom, boom, mm. boom. And then that's when she's, uh, I tell her to pose, I give her the pose and then she strike the pose. And then, um, I'm yeah, just really take the shot. And I'm, using a, and I'm using my favorite lens, which is the 24 to 70, because it's a, you know, it's going to give me that width that I wanted for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and, but I was just making sure that I get good lighting on her. I think I, I think, I think what I did at first was I went and bought, you know, one of those floor fans uh, in Home mm -hmm. Depot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the big mm -hmm. ones. Like the yeah, I bought ones. that. I bought that, and that was a joke. That was not even. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, 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 this thing's thing huge. Is. Yeah, this, this thing's huge. You need like a freaking wind tunnel. But it wasn't. But it wasn't pushing the parachute. Mm -hmm. It wasn't pushing it. And as soon as a gust of wind got up underneath it, it lifted it up, up and um, it opened up. If you go to the other shot where the girl is in paint, I shot that on the same day out there on the runway. Uh, this one? That one? Yes. Uh, yes, this one here. Um, this one here, I shot her on the runway. I shot her on the runway. I used three-point lighting here. Uh, and what's happening here is uh, uh, this dress uh, is another couture dress that I ordered. I ordered from China, and I know some things in China don't look the way it looks, but it looks <laughs> the way it looks. So um, a lot of these you put together yourself. It's not necessarily you're working with other designers. No, because because here's the thing: we're working with designers. Some designers um, they don't. They don't, and this is no, this is no diss to them on anything. I think I know where you're going with this. Go but some of the designers, some of the looks that they put together, they not well put together. Like, like you, mm. you got, you got strings, you got, you got things falling apart, and they use these dresses for different shows. And by the time you try to shoot it in real life, it don't look like it is in real life. And you have to do a lot of editing to get it where it needs to be, and uh, um, and, and, and so so uh, and also to another thing to style, you know, like um, you could take something very simple um, and style it and make it look very good. So um, I I learned a lot of this, um, you know, in my early childhood. I learned, you know. Uh, a lot of things about fashion and styling and stuff like that. So it's very easy for me to style a woman. So a lot of pictures that you see is me, you know, me either styling or helping styling or advising and guiding along the way and working with the makeup artists and, and stuff like that. Normally for me, the process is I find the location and then I, I get the models. I'm sorry. I get the clothing. And then once I get the clothing, then I get the model. And that's when um, we go to town and we start putting this together. I didn't know you this. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Say, let me ask you this. What, where do you, where, where are some places that you go to look for the clothing that you do? Like, do you, do you just search on certain sites for something and you say, oh, that looks good? Or do you like have like a mood board that you look at? And then, you know, say, hmm, let me find something that I can put together to make this idea. Like, how do you how do you go through that process? Um, basically, what I do is I go I literally go on. Like I said, first thing first is I come up with the concept in my head. 
like for this concept, I I automatically thought about the parachute. So I said, I'm gonna do this at the airport and just build the concept around it. And I know I wanna shoot it outside with natural light. I need good sunlight. I need all these things to fall in place for me. And then um, I go through all the different outfits. Um, oh, you, there's another one there too. The girl, she's in front of the plane. Uh, uh, with, yeah, that one there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I just build the concept around it. I build the concept around it. And um, like for example here, Stalin, um, I got and where was boots. Where was this at? Same place. The same airport. Yeah. So this guy, he had this plane and uh, I saw it and I was like, can you bring it out the hangar for me? And he was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> he, moved it. he moved the plane out there and um, it's very hot. She's on this pavement. It's very hot. But I got these boots. I bought these boots um, uh, from a website and I think they cost me about $30. Um, <laughs> And then this umbrella that she holding, this is a Louisiana type thing. You ever saw when they walking down the street and somebody is dead and they be dancing in the street? Mm -hmm. That's that umbrella that they be okay. doing it with. And um, the, the dress I got off, the skirt, I, it's a plastic skirt I got off of eBay. And basically I put this together, you know? Nice. Um, like uh, John, he brought up Happy. Um, when I met Happy, it was it was like it was like meet my twin because we, we I do the same exact things um, and I think it's a Virgo thing. I think I mentioned this to John. I think it's a Virgo thing. We just very creative like that as Virgos. Uh, Lindsay Adler, she's a Virgo too, by the way. And um, and and um, so what I needed here is just good makeup. Um, good makeup um and i got a great makeup artist and everything like that and this this model she's very talented and everything just started to fall in place um if you go to the green one uh the green picture i see right there um i shot this in the snow this one um, yeah yo that's one of my favorite pictures yeah this one's crazy like that's when john was weird. showing me Fire. Yeah, when John was showing me, I was like, yo, this this picture, yeah, this is insane. I remember when I first saw this, I was like, God damn. <laughs> I was like, hold on. I was like, I, let, me, let me rethink a few things real quick. <laughs> so, so, so this picture, right, literally, uh, it was like we had a snowstorm, right? And I went to all the way out to Pennsylvania to shoot her. And um, I'm going down the I'm going down the road. And and uh, this was the this was the last no second to last dress I tried, and um, I was literally pulled over on the side of the road, and it was at a funeral home. Mm. And you know how when you pull into the lot, how they have like the slab where it's up really high, and then you go onto the ground like that. Mm -hmm. So basically, I just i i put her i put her where the sun was hitting her direct. And um, and then um, basically, I just had her mom stand behind her, and I had her mom just go poof, just poof this dress for me real quick, and um, and I count down one, two, three, like this, and when she threw it up, when she threw it up, um, I was like, oh my god, and I was I only used one light, which is hard light. So any other photographer out there, hard light versus with the sunlight coming in on the same side, I call it God lighting because, mm. because God is supplying the sunlight and you're coming in with scrobe lighting and you're bringing those two worlds together and boom. And that's Hold what on. happens in this picture. Let me make sure I understand what you're saying. You're doing hard lights the same direction the sun's coming from. So both are coming right. from the same direction. No. So what I'm doing is I'm coming with hard light on the shadow side well, and I'm coming guy. and I got the sunlight coming in on on the left side here. And basically I'm mixing these two together and I call it I call it, you know, I call it God lighting because God is assisting and mm -hmm. boom. 
And this one hard light just pounding and hitting because I needed to punch through so I could get the eyes. So I needed it to punch through like that. And um, when you're shooting like this, you you recognize it right away because I'm so used to sh seeing this when I shoot like this. And um, so this this is a look that I'm always going through because you're going to see it on magazine covers all the time, mm. all the time. That's interesting. I see a, people, a lot of people do that, too. Like they shoot outside with the they'll even bring backdrops and they'll shoot outside and have the sunlight. And then, yeah, I never yeah. thought about using hard light as the fill light. That's, that's yeah. really interesting. You yeah, can see the one. You can see the other picture too, which the girl is on the with the gold silver with the where she's on a little boat in the water right there. That's same same technique. Here. Yeah, I see a lot, especially um, especially a lot of the the fashion photographers now this using film. Like, yeah, because because you know a new uh, the the whole thing, the whole big new thing fad going on right now in photography is like everybody's going back to film. And everybody's mm -hmm. using the Pentax cameras and a lot of other stuff and the, the kind of looking down into the, the camera kind of thing to shoot. And um, because they're using film, a lot of times that and they're using natural light, they have to go off of and, and, and kind of use flashes to cancel out and so forth. And yeah, I see very mm -hmm. much what you mean. But yeah, man, that's that's impressive, man. Very, very yeah, impressive. And, and let, let, let it be known and, and everybody watching and, and future things we put out that let this be a lesson man it doesn't gotta be you know i hear so many photographers complain and stuff and go oh i, I don't know any fashion designers i don't know anyone i don't have anybody to work with and i don't have anything to do like bro create it yourself yeah you got yeah. sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it you know mm -hmm. what i mean sometimes you gotta get out there and create your own thing you got a vision i would like to shoot this one day go shoot it yourself there's no yep. reason you can't put it together shoot amazon and, and everything you just heard carl said it's easy to get this stuff nowadays for cheap yeah and put something together and and make it happen and make it for work it. for real because, and because, I, I mean because because, because you, you and I, I definitely want to encourage him that because because remember as a photographer we are always looked at we are always looked at like people are looking at us making decisions whether they want to hire us whether they want to work with us there people are making these decisions based on what you're posting based on whether you're tapping into something that they're interested in mm -hmm. and um nine times out of ten nine times out of ten um in my time uh everyone wants to be Everyone wants to be a model. Mm -hmm. Everyone. I mean, I mean, from I don't care if you're shooting weddings. Um, the only people that want, don't want to be a model is a baby. Babies in <laughs> <laughs> babies in um, landscapes. You know. Yeah, uh, I feel you on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, you I'll, can I'll... put it together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, put it together. And here's something. I'll... Here's something interesting. It's kind of taking it back to what Josh said earlier about uh, stepping away and doing something new um, is if you want to be an artist, any kind of artist, really. But if you want to be a photographer, work on building your uh, your visual library um, and it's how creativity kind of works. So there was a there's a teacher. Uh, he does FDV, FD, FD. DZ school uh, on YouTube, but he's a, he's a concept artist. So he, he paints uh, and draws concept art for movies and stuff like that. But he talks about your visual library that you have. And it, it comes from, you know, going out, seeing nature, going to museums, uh, reading books, um, you know, all those kind of things kind of come together and build your creative uh, library of visual things that you can think of and put together in your head. The better you are at that, the easier it is to come up with ideas like this that just kind of come out of nowhere. Like nobody else would think of, you know, the the idea that you had here for this 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 parachute. But because your visual library includes the fact that you are a pilot and you understand how parachutes work and you you know kind of what you would want to see in this type of picture. That's something that's kind of unique to you, but it comes from the fact your your life experience and your your visual the things that you've seen throughout your life. So getting outside and just doing things that are outside of your normal your normal everyday things will build that visual library for you. Well, here's here's here's, here's what helps, right? Um, 
And this is something else. I see John do it all the time. Photographers cannot be lazy. You have to you have to go get your lighting and bring it. Like like I see John. John will put in his car. He will put four <laughs> lights. He he's driven oh, by four. getting the shot. <laughs> he's driven, and and it's the same thing that I want to encourage photographers. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't be lazy, man. Go and if if you know you're going out there, and you know. Um, you know, you need two lights for the for your project. Bring two lights and use them. Don't always yeah. rely on one light. You know Don't, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's facts. Like learn learn strobes. Like natural light is great, and a, a lot of times natural light is the best light you're gonna get. But learning strobes gives you so much control and and uh, options when it comes to how you want to light something. Um, I'll add to that, and I get it. I get it. It's it's strobes are a little bit intimidating when you've mm -hmm. never used them before. I know a lot of photographers that say that. I have so many people that say that in the beginning, a little bit of myself included. Um, strobes can be very intimidating in the beginning, but mm -hmm. I'm telling you, just attack them, just get used to it. Because once you get used to it, you don't want to never be without them, you know? Right, yep. It, and it's when you, shoot, it, when you shoot, it's nothing wrong with shooting natural light. Here's the problem with natural light. For me, as a as a shooter, natural light natural light is good, but when you pull that image up in the file, so, sometimes it it looks really really grainy, and um and you know so it's it's a matter of uh, it's a thing like 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 you do get a different look, but when you're dealing with fashion, when you're dealing with fashion like that, um. You know, you have to think about what look you're trying to go for, because here in this shot right here uh, with the parachute, you see how she just pops out. And it's because mm -hmm. the flash is because the flash is doing that and it's stopping it's stopping energy and you catching uh, you getting all this coming forward like this. Uh, and it's that great balance that's bringing it together. So. Uh, um, there's nothing wrong with natural light shooting, but but uh, it depends on everything. Depends on the style. It depends on the fashion. It depends on you what you're trying to go for. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I do shoot natural light sometimes, um, and I will try it sometimes on certain things. But when you're like when you're dealing with um, when shooting outdoors. Um, you know, I don't want to be stuck with, okay, you know what? I got to wait till the sun go down. To wow. Shoot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, it's, yeah. That, that, that was the next super thing I was going to say. Yep. This like, it all depends time. on the time, depends on a lot of things. And I'm not hating yep. on natural. Like Josh, for no. instance, is amazing. At natural amazing light. Josh is one of the only ones I've ever seen who can shoot natural light and make you think it was a stroke. Because mm -hmm. um, most people's natural light looks very flat. It looks very um, particular kind of style. Which, mm -hmm. which that style is a whole thing in itself. It, it's a yep. cool thing in it, it really in itself. And that's not a bad thing. Um, for instance, you see a lot of that style with the the, the washed out uh, background, washed out sky, a lot that mm -hmm. you see in, in the, I, I call it the hallmark look that you see in weddings and all that, that really filmy, natural, like grainy type of look kind of style. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's a really, that's a really cool thing in itself. Um, you know, but it, it takes, a, you know, it can take a lot more sometimes and depending on your situation and spending, especially fashion, when you got to move fast and you got to do all these things, it, you just don't always have the time necessarily to pull that off. And that's where sometimes a flash comes in handy. So I, it, it's both, it's, it's good to know both. It's good to it, really know you, both. Yeah. You want to know you both. Go, when you, when you go through, when you go through, you know, look at Josh Bragg. <laughs> when you go through the setting up, when you go through setting up the shoot, when you go through setting up the shoot, setting up the model, you got like, for example, this shoot right here. I had models come all the way from DC to shoot with me. Mm -hmm. I I can't take a chance. Right, you with, don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. I don't have. I can't take a chance whether the sun is going to be be kind to me. Um, right. I, you know, I have to. I I like to. Um, sometimes I take with me four scrolls 
and I will easily pull out four scrolls. I don't care if it's bright sun. I'm still pulling out four scrolls, and um, I want to overpower whatever mm-hmm. scene that I'm trying to overpower, and yeah. I, I'm going for a, I'm going for a certain look. Um, yeah. But once again, don't get me wrong. You could definitely shoot it with natural light. You know, you could definitely shoot it with natural light, and you can enjoy that. But, but for me, I, I, I like, I like it to punch. It's just a style thing. At the end of the day, it's a style thing. You know, it is. And you can, mm-hmm. I mean, you can recreate the look of natural light with strobes. Like it doesn't. You can get a lot of that look from your strobes if you if you know what you're doing. I mean, it's just a hard light. So a lot of times you can you can recreate that look if you want it. Uh, but that 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 versatility being able to shoot any time of the day you know if it's if it's high noon but i want it to look like it's you know golden hour i can do that with a strobe you know you just pull out a scrim and a strobe and you've, you've changed how your how your light looks completely uh, can you can you pull up that headshot the one where i did uh with the psychedelic colors there going on yeah that's yeah that's cool man yeah Love, right. love the look. So, so was this another one that you designed, or? So basically, this started off as a test shoot. Um, my okay. makeup artist knew her, and when okay. I saw her, when I saw her right away, I said, "Oh my God, her Boy's skin is model, man. Yeah. yeah, her skin is like her fire. Skin is amazing." And yeah. I was like, I was like, so I told my makeup artist, I was like, "Okay, so bring her in, and let's 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 see what we could do." And uh, uh, my intentions was actually to create content. And um, then once I I tried a new technique here, I, I put uh, V-flats um, on both sides and um, the dark side on the V-flat. And I used one light, uh, one, well, I had um, the beauty dish and I used two back lights uh, and then I, in my thought, when I saw her, I was thinking right off the rip, I was thinking, you know, um, I think it was Black History Month coming up. So I started thinking in that vein with this shoot. And um, I called it Soul Power. And um, and that's when um, I, I went to town with this. I basically mm-hmm. uh, have two gels on the backside here. I have a red and a green gel on the back side, and then I have another. I use four lights for this, and I have another light, a purple light from below, and that's when um, all this started coming together. So and this wasn't in post. You did this. You did this with the lights. Yeah, I did this with the lights. Yes, that's I did dope. This, um, um, the only thing I added in post was the 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 green and red. You know, um, the green and red, but everything else was did right out of camera that's crazy nice man yeah it's really good yeah, yeah like your your style go through a couple more of his photos again because his, his stuff is just so it's just, just amazing <laughs> like 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 yo just it's it's the subtle stuff it's the fact mm-hmm. that like it's the dress on a very simple and i know you you shot this in philly didn't you i you do yes i yes. know you shot this yeah yeah he, he <laughs> You shot this by um, uh, what's it called now? It's got a weird name now, but it, it used to be this abandoned train it's center. This it's, abandoned it's like train a, it's, stop it's on park. top of like Vine Street, yeah, and they turned it into a park, and because yeah, they got tired park. of like people like going up there and trespassing and all this other stuff. Yeah, I shot there before too, man. And yeah, that's freaking gorgeous like, the stuff you're creating, man. I did not know you created this stuff. I thought all of this was like you working with designers. designers so that yeah. just tells me so much more of your talent and so right. much more of I mean, like photographers watching. And and I'm gonna uh, my assistant need to show this because he, he this, this, like the cry all the time. Like I can't right I don't have anybody, bro. You make this right stuff here? yourself. This picture right here. This picture right here. Now now watch this. This picture right here. You can't tell. But right now it's 40 below. It's 40 below. The wind is gusting, right? Watch this. So this is this is you know how they have like the inlets on the beach where the where the boats go through. They raise the bridge and then you have the inlets. So I told the model she came all the way from North Carolina to shoot with me. Hmm. 
and she came there to freeze because basically uh, <laughs> you know, she, so I told her, I was like, we got to walk all the way down to the very end. And where and is I'm this grab, at? This was in Jersey. Um, uh, this is like the inlet. And um, yeah. And then I told her, I was like, uh, you have to walk all the way down. So you need to put on some sneakers. It's cold. I know I'm cold, but we got to go. I, I, I just see this vision in my head and I grab some red material and some black material that I bought from Amazon. And um, I grabbed this and I took this with me and I climbed up the ladder and I tied this, I tied this to the ladder and the wind is gusting and it's blowing me around. Right. And, um, and she was like, I'm so cold. I was like, shake it off, shake it off. I tell my, <laughs> shake it off. Shake it off. I tell you work, I say, girl. I don't want to hear it. You gotta work. Well, what I do, right? I tell them, I say, the way you feel right now, when you're looking back at these pictures, you're gonna be warm with a cup of coffee in your hand. You'll be looking at this, you're gonna you're gonna you gonna and you're gonna That's be saying to yourself, I could have did this, I could have did that, and then and then it's only a moment. And that's what we have. We have a moment. And I think photographers need to remember that, that what we doing when we, when we squeeze that shutter is we capturing a moment in time, a moment in time that you can never get back. You can't never play it back uh, if, you, you know, if you mess it up. But we capturing that moment. We, we locked into this moment and this timing. I made her walk across these rocks and I put her up there. And I, she just went to town and she started posing like crazy because she was cold. And um, we, we, I started getting these shots and once I, and I used one light. I basically used one hard light because the wind would have blew my modifier out of here. Mm. But I raised it up real high and basically I, um, I got one foot on it and I'm trying to get in position as much as I can. And, um, Basically, I took this shot. Ah, that answers my question. I was gonna say you had an assistant, but now it sounds like you did this one all by yourself. Yeah, I had to do this all by myself. I just needed her to just get up there and uh, and basically perform. A lot of models that shoot with me, um, they look at my work and they they know what to do when they come in front of me, pretty much. Hmm. That's impressive. Facts. That's bro. dope. It really is. It Seriously really is. Yeah, I just bro, like it, some of your work just blows me away, man. For real, like it, it's so it's so fashion, it's so couture, it's so. I did. I, I'm just blown away right now because I did not know you created this stuff by yourself. I thought this was all you working with designers, and all that just makes it so much. I more do. Impressive. I do work like yeah. with designers. Um, go to the one where the girl is. Uh, it's like a pinkish look, a pinkish one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one. So, so That's basically, wild. yeah, basically, she, she, uh, she knew the designer in New York. It's a, it's a, uh, like a store where designers leave their clothing or whatever. Mm -hmm. She went and got this. She went and got this dress, and um, I shot this in the studio. Um, the background I bought from Amazon. It's like thirty bucks. Um, my my partner Rodney uh, Rollo Cross. He he put me on to this to this uh, material, and um, and basically uh, you're able to do so much with it. And um, I'm using here. I used I used a beauty dish and I used a strip box for this. Mm. And um, and and um, my hairstylist, my hairstylist, she she styled it. She did the makeup and everything like that. And I just basically got in the rhythm of where I wanted to go with this. Nice man. Was this putting in like any magazines or any? Everything you, everything you, everything you're posting has been either published. Been on covers are published. <clears throat> nice. There's uh, one other question I have for you. What is your what is your process for for finding and then you know submitting to magazines for other people who? So so so. Mm -hmm. A lot of photographers uh, come from that world where basically, you know, they do a session and they only edit five images, right? Mm -hmm. 
or to get a model like five images. That's pretty much pretty much where a lot of photographers are. Me, I edit in the neighborhood of somewhere in the neighborhood, maybe I'm gonna say 60 to 80 pictures because mm. because from one I, shoot from one shoot because um I want to submit the um the model to a lot of magazines mm. and um depending on depending on the stratosphere of where the shoot went um and that can determine how many covers we achieve um it could determine um you know everything i shoot gets placement so mm. if a model shoot with me you're going to get placement hmm. if you you know um depending on what we bring fashion wise to the table matters a lot so um and it could range from anything from like if photographers don't want to invest in money pay a, pay a makeup artist pay a makeup artist to do the makeup and find you a hairstylist and you could create uh, you could create a beauty shoot and come up with something very mm-hmm. very creative all yeah. the time like, like I hear I, once again, I hear so many young photographers complain that they they can't do this, they can't find this. And I'm like, bro, you gotta like a lot of it. And I, I understand it to an extent. A lot of it's fear. You know, what I mean, it's like you gotta put yourself out there. Stop telling yourself no. Stop telling this nonsense that you, you know, nobody's going to contact you back or whatever. You know, this generation, especially with with social media and all, and like they they don't want to communicate or, or conflict with anyone. It's like, bro, that's the name of the game. Like you got to get out there and put yourself forward and make connections, mm-hmm. make connections with makeup artists and hairstylists and all these different things and so forth and build a team for yourself and go with it. Like, you know, and it's, it's just part of it. It doesn't matter if it's, um, especially in the visual side, <clears throat> especially if it's photography, if it's video, it's cinematography, directing, any of that. It's all delegating. It's all delegating and negotiating and, and, and um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? And uh, networking. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. I mean, you're, you're like my, my old partner back in the day. Shout out to JB if he's watching. Your network is your net worth. You know what I mean? And that's everything, man. So, yeah, yeah you, man. Can, you, you can't if you if you a photographer that just sit around and just go, man, this person won't work with me. That person won't work with me. That's not true. Um, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of makeup artists that, that w- want to work with you. There's a lot of, um, and you have to start somewhere, you know, um, build a team because building a team is going to make you better. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I can tell you right now, it's very hard to find really good models right off the bat because, um, because, they don't tr- remember. They don't trust. We gotta remember what we're doing. We're capturing people' image, right? Um, and you, as a photographer, have to realize that that's the value in someone. In someone, it's it's their image. So they actually really, really care. And and you need to take pride in that by making sure you have a makeup artist making sure you have a hairstylist, making sure that they understand exactly what concept you're going to try to do. Mm-hmm. And and uh, uh, here's another thing, I, another point that I could give photographers is before you go, let's say, for example, you're planning a shoot, right? I always say I'm only as good as my preparation that I did the day before. So I'm running off of my subconscious of what I learned prior are things I've seen prior to me going into the shoot. And when I go into the shoot, those things start coming out. It could be a color. It could be, it could be any little thing. And next thing you know, I'm using all those tools. Um, also, I find inspiration in my peers. I find inspiration in John work. I follow John work. I love Josh work. I love everything Josh create. We we not we not the same type of shooter, 
but I, I can appreciate everything that he do. Um, um, and I love, that's another thing. I'm, I love watching other people work and admiring others work. Um, I'm, so I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a, I'm a student of, you know, of different things coming in. You know, I love what John do. I love, I love John color grading. I love it. I love. Oh, thank you, man. Dude, yeah. I, I, I love it. I, and I love how when you, when you show how you take something so simple and you, dude, it's amazing. It's oh, amazing. You, same it's with the brother, same, same with the brother right here too. I love his work too. I love, I love how you, how, um, you could take something so simple and you can make it pop and you can make it stand out. And, um, and yes, you know, you have to get out of that box where, you know, you only enjoy just your photography, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you have to get out of that box where we stuck with rules where, you know, so-and-so taught this on, on YouTube and, this the way it needs to be. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. we constantly breaking rules. Uh, John, I, I watch John do stuff. He constantly breaking rules. Mm -hmm. He constantly breaking rules, and there's no rules to creativity. Yep, That's some nice. work, some don't. <laughs> some, but yeah, yep. it's, it's 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 so true, man. Yo, I absolutely, absolutely love your humility, dog. Yeah, like that's that's so important. So everything and, and something I had to, to reiterate into myself lately. Um, I sat down and, and did another class with Josh and a few other photographers not too long ago, just because the same with you, Rob, because mm -hmm. it, it was just like, yo, man, like, like, there's always something to learn every no matter right. how much you think, you know, right. the way people do things, little nuances and tricks and things and here and there. And once again, Josh and, and Rob, for instance, and, and a couple other photographers I followed and and sat down and watched you know were they doing anything that i didn't know no but it was the order and how they did it it was the the you ever think of doing it like this or putting mm -hmm. this here with this and so forth and just the things sometimes you just don't think about mm -hmm. and, and, and just like you said man we get we get stuck in a box we get stuck in an echo chamber and and we we start to part my french i think we're past the time where we can curse we start to do <laughs> our own bullshit you know what i mean and you got to snap out of that you definitely got to snap out of that, man. And, and do absolutely love your humility. It only makes you grow. And, bro, I've seen your progress um, from the time that I we, we kind of saw each other early on in, in social media and so forth. And uh, shout out to my boy, SMD. He put it so well earlier, man. Like, you, you, I, I, Carl, you post like crazy in all the, 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 um, the photography groups and everything else. And sometimes, bro, mm -hmm. you do not get the respect that you deserve, bro. <laughs> That is so, so much true. Cause like, yo, some of your work, like, I was like, bruh, <laughs> like, I'll be seeing some of it. Like, and you take chances. I, I've seen mm -hmm. sometimes where sometimes it's a hit and miss, you know, I, I'm, I'm very much the same way, you know, but that's how you grow. And, and, right. I've seen, and your you growth, your growth has been amazing. man. I've seen some of the early stuff you've done and where you're at now. And I'm blown away, bro. And it's, it's only time I'm, I'm telling you that, you know, you you know, I, I'm already, you know, I'm already just waiting to win this is L magazine and vibe and everything else and and uh, <laughs> uh, what's what's the what's the big one Vogue, Vogue and everything else Vogue and L it's coming <laughs> it's coming I already seen it and and you know talk a little bit about that talk about um you talked a little bit about the submissions and so forth and that was good info man and, and definitely big thing of like submit a lot. Don't be afraid mm. to submit a lot. Stop, stop getting all there were other photographers out there and young photographers. Stop getting caught up in like, oh, this is my favorite picture. And just put it out, put it out, put it out, see what mm -hmm. happens. Um, but talk a little bit about just the fashion industry in whole and, and, and your experience with that. Um, fashion week, for instance. I know you're close to New York. I know you've done mm -hmm. fashion week yeah. a lot. I've done some and everything else. Talk a little bit about that and that whole process, and especially if somebody wants to get into that. And what would mm -hmm. be so, so fashion, fashion week. Um, that's how I actually broke into uh, the fashion game here. Basically, I would go to fashion week, and I would meet the models. And it's basically, um, if you watch that movie, um, it, 
colors, right? That scene where uh, he says, young man, um, you see these goats down here? You can either go and get, you know the, you know the term he said, right? You can either go and you know have sex with one of the goats, or you can you know you can have sex with all the goats. You can walk down <laughs> and, and the, the the bull and the sheep. I, remember, I always heard the bull where it's like the the bull father says to the the the, the calf of the son, the son or whatever. And he's yeah. like, Dad, Dad, let's get down there and get one. He was like, Son, we're gonna walk. So, down. dude, I go to the fashion show. I go to the fashion show and I and it's like watching all these beautiful girls. So I'm saying to myself. Hmm. Oh my God! Only thing I have to do is just go and catch one of them behind stage and be like, "Yo, I want to shoot with you." But guess what? That's what I did. I and what I did was I I would go to the fashion show and I would bring one light with me, one mm-hmm. light. And when you know, after they walk the runway, they go to this area where they take group pictures, right? And then what I would do is I would find my favorite model or my favorite look. And I would pull them off to the side and I'll be like, okay, let's do, we do like a little quick session. Like I'm quick. I get like five shots, six shots, and then boom, I'm good. Next girl, come on. Next thing you know, I would have a line. Um, This would happen to me in a club too. I would start shooting. And before I look up, it's a line of people behind me. (laughs) Yep. And, 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 and next thing you know, I got other people joining in, people working the dress. I got, and and it would be like this at every fashion show. And before you know it, I built my reputation like this. And when I enter the building, you know, all the models go, hey, Carl's here. Carl's here. He's out mm-hmm. there. Yo, go over here. Go over there. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Da, da, da. And next thing you know, it, it, it happens and I start to build. I start to build my catalog of models and I start to understand what models I want to shoot. And I'm, of course, I'm thinking editorial and I'm thinking magazine because I'm looking for faces that match to some of the things that you see. Because I have to say this, um, I'm a black photographer. I'm a black photographer. And I have I got a lot of no's because I would submit a lot of stuff that was you know, just black women and I would get a lot of notes, but you know, so I need to, I needed to diversify, and I need to uh, um, um, find a way to, to, to um, make so it wait, all. You said, so you say you were getting a lot of notes because you mainly had black women as your, your subjects. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I I get that, and 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 I wouldn't necessarily for for those watching, I wouldn't necessarily take that as serious as a, a racist kind of thing. Um, no, I think it's, it's more. Not, it's not like that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's more like of a that. just the the the. I get it. The, the designers and the companies want variety because of the demographics mm-hmm. they got to sell to, and everything else. That's the same as um sometimes when I, I critique some people's portfolios or different stuff that people shot or whatever. Um, well, it's it's schools, it's, whatever. It's, it's nothing. Is it? You know what? This is. It's nothing against none of that. It, what it is is this is what they want for their magazines. Mm. And people have it's the demographic all about what they sell to. Yeah, yeah right. it's, it's right. all about choice at the end of the day. But me as a photographer, I need to diversify. I need to mm. adjust, and I need to I need to adhere to what because I want to get my I want to get my work in these magazines. I want to get my models seen. And as time progress and time changing, then you see a lot of black models on covers now because mm. because they. You know, I think people realize in different things that, yo, dark skin models, man, they bring it and they look mm-hmm. great. <clears throat> the skins, <clears throat> their skin look great. Everything like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's mm-hmm. all about a diversity thing. And also, too, when you submit to these magazines, you're creating um, you're creating a rapport with them. So every time they see your work, they start to understand your style. They start to understand that you is your work all the time. And they start to look for you and check for you. And now you can you can you could take chances and you could push the envelope. You could do different things. You know, I could try different things, you know, and um, because at the at the end of the day, we're competing um, for a lot of people watching where you submit your mag- uh, submit your pictures to. You go on caviar caviar.com. That's where all the magazines are. 
Mm. And um, basically, you you find a magazine that caters to whatever you're um you're looking to uh, submit. Um, and you know, uh, I think I need to say this. Um, lingerie, lingerie, okay, lingerie, underwear, pantyhose, new. Oh, that is not fashion. Mm, correct. That is not fashion. So you need to identify what magazine caters to your style of work. I think I need to be clear with that because because uh, a lot of photographers uh, will submit, you know, women with um, I call it glamour, you know, mm. glamour wear basically glamour, boudoir, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all in the don't same. Wrong. It it could go in the magazine. I'm, we're not saying it don't, but it's different magazines that cater to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We gotta be clear and we gotta understand that. You know, yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's all about niche, and, and it's no different with the magazines as it is to photography. You know, if if you shoot bikes all the time, you're a bike enthusiast, or you shoot, right. you know, whatever, um, sports, whatever you want to, you want to put to the magazines that cater to that. You want to put to the companies exactly. or whatever you're going for that, that cater to that. I need to, say to this too. I need to say this too. So let's say, for example, you do a shoot. Okay, let's say, for example, you do a shoot today. And let's say the shoot is the shoot is dope, and the magazines want to use it, right? The magazines want to use it, and so you can't turn around and post this on Instagram and social media, right? The next day, you can't right. turn around, you can't turn around and have this out on social media in no shape or form, Facts. because because the models, because the magazine editors going to check on you to consider see if publish. you to consider publishing it so what you so what you do is you say to yourself when i do this shoot you let the model know that this shoot i'm going to submit and you cannot use these images for two months yeah I, I literally had to jump on my assistant today because he was getting ready to post something that we shot for Justin that is getting ready to go to some magazines, some other stuff. And I think Justin gave him like the okay with some stuff. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. no, 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 it's not like <laughs> because I know he gonna post. He gonna put it to a bunch of people. Let him do that first. Mm -hmm. Um, because so and 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 kind of you know anybody watching that doesn't know, kind of news for you. Um, you can't submit to most, especially any major company, any major magazine major outlet of anything of entertainment media broadcasting and so forth if you put it on social media before it goes to whatever broadcasting it's considered published and not yeah. about it and they won't put it out if they find out about it so yeah, is that, that is that why you do so many so you don't have the same things being published by multiple places or is all that right why so, you edit so many? that's a good question so all right so let's say for example you submit let's say for example um, we're going to just use the number system. So let's say, for example, you submit picture number one. All right. So you submit picture. Let's say because most magazines want four, four images to six images from the shoot mm -hmm. and they're looking for different looks. So let's say, for example, you submit six, uh, a total of four pictures. Right. So picture number one, picture number two, picture three and four go to the first magazine. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't come back and submit that to another magazine. So now you need to find picture number five, six, seven, and eight to yep. post to a different magazine. Because, because Caviar will ping, will ping you and let you know that the magazine, uh, the magazine likes this picture and you can't, um, you can't submit this picture to any other magazine. Mm. So, so, so normally what we do when we, this is another important thing. When you, when you get used to shooting uh, for editorial, what we do is I call it, we take a, a, a picture head to toe and then, well, full body. Then we do a midland shot mm -hmm. and then we do a head shot. Mm -hmm. So now we have enough to fill in that story. You know what I'm saying? Because if you and also to another thing too, 
Um, guys, write this down. Um, maybe you want to write this down for them. The size that they're looking for is 8.5 no. by 11. 11. Yep. yep. That's how and I make all my photos now. I don't care what it is, what I do. do not, Everything do not waste by 11. Time, or 11 do not by waste your time submitting landscape pictures because landscape pictures means that they have to lay it out over the page Two and it's going to fall between that gap. And that means that they're not going to end up using that shot because they're not going to do anything like that for you. Mm-hmm. But, um, and also <laughs> too, magazines do not pay, magazines do not pay, um, pay photographers to actually uh, submit to their magazines or pay for editorials. Mm-hmm. Some magazines will, but it's very rare. Um, another thing too, I highly suggest that you don't pay for covers because if you get into that game of paying for covers, magazines will solicit you and they will ask you to pay anywhere up from $80 to, um, I don't think up to $900 for to be on the cover of their magazine. And they'll never look at you the same either. And they're going to never, and they're going to look at, yeah. Another thing too, they always gonna be looking at you as the uh, ching ching machine when they see you right. coming. Yeah. So for those of you who are, are wondering, like, well, well, if you're saying you never get paid for magazines, or how do they, how do photographers make money when we see this stuff and some of the big ones and Vogue and all that kind of stuff? So it, it works a couple ways. One, that uh, are there photographers whose pictures are in Vogue? Vogue did not pay for. Yes, one hundred percent. Are there pictures in Vogue that Vogue paid for? Sometimes. I'm a, I'm a, I'm I'm a stress sometimes because what happens a lot of times is usually uh, it's a combination of things. So let's say, for instance, Ralph Lauren. I'm just giving you a wild kind of one here. Um, let's say Ralph Lauren did some crazy campaign, something bigger than what they usually do. They usually don't even have to do that kind of stuff anymore. They're just Ralph Lauren at this point. But <laughs> if they did something like that, nine times out of ten, they would be paying Vogue to put it in and then – they're funding everything and then Vogue is just kind of backing them. So right. that happens sometimes. Or, or let's say you see like an Entertainment Weekly, right? Most of the photos in Entertainment Weekly, Entertainment Weekly did not pay for it. What ends up happening is the movie studios paid to have whatever's featured going on and so forth in it. Or they did some kind of conjunction or so forth where maybe like Entertainment Weekly found them the photographer or whatever, back and forth. So that's kind of how it goes. So it, it's kind of rare now that the, the magazines actually pay for photos. They do sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, it just it's it very much depends. It's very rare. Usually the times that the magazines pay is when like they really need a specific kind of cover, like somebody's really hot and something's going on and they need to get them in real quick and nobody else can cover it or whatever. So F it, we'll pay it ourselves. Take it out of petty cash, whatever. That kind of thing. That's usually when they, you know, let's say Adele's putting out a hot album and whatever, they can't get a hold of her or she's so hot, they're struggling to get her. Then they'll mm-hmm. pay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. That's usually how it goes. So, I, I want to I wanna say... I want to say, like, like a lot of people say, uh, why, why, if if a magazine is not paying you, why submit your pictures to them and stuff like that, right? All right, so here's the here's the game in town, right? Mm-hmm. As photographers, as photographers, we all should be into building our brand, mm-hmm. building our brand, and you have to decide as a photographer. What is your brand worth? Because, 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 because if you don't, if you're, if you're, if let's say, for example, their clients, let's say, for example, their clients that are looking for, um, their clients that are looking for, um, a, you know, a fashion style photographer as opposed to a regular photographer. My brand, my brand says says this when you look at my stuff, my body of work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, and also too, as as a photographer, I need to know how good I am. I need to be able to uh, compete. I need to be able to compete with other other photographers that are creating stuff just as good as me, 
and I mm. want to know how good I am. I want to know, you know, I want to know, um, is my work good enough? Because for a long time before I started submitting to magazine, as a photographer, I think everybody come across that, that question in their mind, how good are you? Hmm. How good are you? And, you know, am I better? Th- I, I, Lindsay Alley is my hero. You know, I love her work. But I, in my heart, I'm asking myself, am I just as good as her? Am I yeah, good can, enough? Am and my I answer is enough? yes, you are. You know? <laughs> <laughs> really, I'm not even just saying that, bro. Dude, that, that talk goes through my head all the time. Like seeing you, seeing people's works. Like, can I do that? Could I do that shot? Could I take that? Yeah, you so, definitely so, are now, bro. For so, real. so, so, you know, and also too, a lot of shoots that we do. Let's be honest, as photographers, a lot of shoots that we do, we do for free. Can we speak truthfully? We do a lot of work for free. Not every time we pull out a camera, we're getting paid because we need to do. We need to do work and and think about this, right? And, and I think John could uh, help me with this. Nine times out of 10, the work that you are really, really proud about and care about is your project. Mm-hmm. And it's so sad because we, we really, a paying client, a paying client, we tend to be more passionate to our project than a paying client. And they're paying us. So, so, so what you would do, what you would do something for free and have passion about versus, you know, something that you paid about, it really don't really balance out really. You know, I think, I think, I think we need to look at it from that standpoint. Like, like we need to care about our brand and we need to care about, um, you know, we need to take pride in the projects that we care about and we we can't be clicking a camera just because we need money. I mean, I agree. I'm I'm going to add to that a little bit. I I think it still all goes one in tandem. So for instance, um, I shoot a lot of creative stuff and I shoot stuff that I do shoot for free. That that's my own projects. I put my stuff together and so forth and, and, you know, put my own little things together, whatever I want to do. I do the same thing like you, one combination to, to, to challenge myself to, I never tried this before. I probably can't convince a client to do this. So I got to do it on my own to figure it out. And a lot of times that gets you clients a lot. Mm-hmm. My, almost all my work that leads to especially anything like creative clients, like a music artist, a music video, a, a, you know, whatever kind of creative stuff that comes along sometimes along the other like business stuff that I do. Almost all of that comes from the creative stuff that I do it from from me messing around and trying stuff putting stuff on the internet, whatever, is usually I always get some kind of clients that come back to me wanting stuff. Perfect example, I just put up like a bunch of the pictures that I was like trying to play around and do the whole like cyberpunk kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. I didn't think they were that good, but people are loving them for some reason. People are going crazy. And and I had three girls hit me up saying they want to do the cyberpunk look on stripper poles. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, all right, what? And they're like, come out to here and this much money. And they're like, I was like, can you, they were like, we're good. And I'm like, all right. So those kinds of things happen from that and creative, interesting things. Cause, cause a lot of times people are not thinking of it until you create it Mm -hmm. and then they see it and go, Oh, and start putting it. And you make from doing it. Exactly. The other side of it is just kind of part of the hustle. Meaning that, Let's get back into like the magazine stuff. So is it profitable to shoot for magazines that necessarily are not going to pay you? Yes. Why? Because it, it turns into the whole, um, uh, I guess you could say, uh, was it little fish, big pond, big pond, little fish. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the, the situation that happens, meaning that, um, you know, per- perfect. I'll give you a perfect example. I'm from Philly, right? Philly technically is a small city in Philadelphia. I'm sorry, in in America, you know, people know what Philly is, Rocky, all that kind of stuff, so forth. But compared to New York and everything else, which is, you know, right next to and so forth, it dwarfs us in comparison, right? But I go overseas, wherever, France and some other places I've been, I say I'm Philly and they go, oh, what's that? (laughs) <laughs> where's that at and all those kinds of things and, and then i you know I'm from america and so forth and then i show these magazines and different things i've been published and they don't know so they go oh and then it turns into a thing or if you just go to some small town 
in Bumble F compared to a bigger city that you've been in and you've done whatever kind of work. Now you have what's called leverage. Now you're able to leverage some things differently yes. than before. So it all kind of helps one in the same. And then especially if you build a, a large catalog of magazines you've shot in like Carl most definitely has and different things like that. Now it becomes who you think, even if some of these magazines are small, but it's like, dude, I've been published in all of this stuff. Now you look mm -hmm. impressed. Now it turns into, okay, I want to work with that guy, right. you know? So all of it kind of helps one in the same. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's all still part of the process is all still necessary for you to get what you want. You know what I'm saying? And get to where the, the, the promised land, so to speak, you never know. Is, we're creative. You never know. You never know who is actually following you and watching That's your nice. work, and and you never know who wants to hire you for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, when you post certain things, people look at your body of work and they go, "Oh my God, I want to make a picture like that." And and it, all the time. you know. Uh, another thing too, why you want to submit to magazines, remember how social media work, right? So you have your page where you have, where you have your people that follow you, you know, you can't do any wrong. You, you can take a picture and post what you sitting on the toilet and somebody going to like it. <laughs> um, because it's your group of people. When you go, when you submit to magazines, these magazines have followers in different countries and stuff like that. So when they post your picture or put, put their picture in their magazine, there you have other eyes that you didn't even expect watching your work. Even though somebody from Russia probably won't hit you up and be like, yo, I want to do a photo shoot with you. But you just never know because I didn't have people that come all the way from Japan and look for me and say, hey, Carl, I, I know you. I want to shoot with you. Hmm. So you just never know who's mm -hmm. following you and who's looking at you because they're familiar with your work. So right. so, um, so that's why, um, you know, you want to put your stuff in magazine. It's to compete. It's to compete. It's to, it's to grow your brand. It's to grow your network of uh, where you are actually pooling your work so you got a lot of opportunity when you're doing this facts 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 100%. facts man 100%. yeah man it's 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 so much out here and and just you're never going to know unless you really stick your neck out there and i meet um especially young photographers i guess just this day and age we live in i don't i don't really know what you want to call it where they just you know they, they seem to be very shy these days um hmm. And that just really kind of doesn't get you in the head. I mean, a lot. Josh wanted us to talk. Josh wanted us to talk about retouching. I saw him when he commented. Yeah. You know what? Let's let's cover some of that real quick, Josh. We did get a little off subject. <laughs> um. So tell tell us a little bit about your process, bro, and how you go about some of your, your retouching and and just your whole you know, yeah process. That's, so so from the shoot to the everything. Yeah, especially to be banging right on now. sixty sixty a shoot. That's I want to, yeah. <laughs> I can tell you right now, I don't do no micro dodging and burning. Uh, <laughs> I don't do no micro dodging and burning, man. Um, I do feel, I do feel that we need to, we need to, um, uh, um, we need to take care of the scam. We definitely need to do that. Uh, I believe, I'm a strong believer in frequency separation. It works when it's done properly. Um, mm -hmm. um, Josh, Josh, um, Josh, can you drop your? Josh made a um, uh, um, um, frequency separation um, uh, bundle, mm -hmm. and um, maybe he'll drop that in his link in the chat link right here. Josh, that actually worked really well. Um, I use I use okay, so let me say this real quick. I use what is used to be called the ultra retouch um, panel, the okay. ultimate retouch panel. And me and Josh actually sat at the table about this and I introduced it to Josh. Um, basically when I, when I uh, was crying, like I told you, remember I told you I was crying a lot at night cause I wasn't mm -hmm. that good. So while I'm crying, um, 
I'm looking at these, I'm, I'm going through and I'm looking at different um, photographers work and I'm noticing retouching, right? So it started, th so I started saying to myself, retouching, what is this? What, what is this word? I was like, hmm. up until that point, I only heard about the word editing, mm -hmm. editing. I heard editing. I never heard retouching. So, so uh, I look at this word retouching, and all this stuff came up, and I go, "Oh my God, I need to learn this." And what I did was I went on uh, YouTube, YouTube University, and I <laughs> basically put in retouching, and this guy came up, right? Um, and it's this Russian guy. And I sent him a message and he emailed me back. I got so excited. Um, and I asked him about his ultimate retouch panel. And he told me everything about the ultimate retouch panel, but I'm not a computer savvy type person. Mm -hmm. So he said, I will set it up for you on your laptop and everything. So I, I you know, I, I uh, team, team message, team viewer him. He logged into my laptop. He set it all up and everything. And uh, he showed me how it works. And before you know it, I was using this panel and I've been using this panel. I've now switched to the Ninja panel, which is his panel also. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Ninja uh, retouch panel. Mm -hmm. um, but um, he started me off with the ultimate retouch panel. And now I'm on to the Ninja retouch panel. But I, I use the retouch panel. I use this retouch panel and I use um, um, another thing to my uh, guys out there, get you a real good computer to do retouching, um, get you a real good monitor to do retouching, um, get you um, the pad to, uh, you know, the, um, the into it, uh, the intuish uh, pad to do retouching. Wacom. Yeah, the yeah. Wacom tab tablet. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, don't be afraid uh, to to grab that thing. And uh, I always tell people, pay your bills with it first. Like pay your bills. Don't try to do any type of retouching with the uh, Wacom tablet. Just go in here and start paying your bills with it. And before you know it, you can be like, oh man, I'm just using a pen to do this. Yeah. You notice the right. difference. Right uh, that's yeah. a good, that's that's a good a, yeah, strategy. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, yeah. That's why I used to tell people, just use it all the time. Just use it for everything that you're doing on the computer, and eventually you'll get used to it. Yes. Yeah. And, and, that's a very and, good strategy. And and, and then, um, and then so yeah, the guy, this guy, his his retouch panel is awesome. And then I, he, he added, me and him would talk back and forth. And I would tell him all the things I need in a the panel. Then he would make more things in the panel to cater to some of the things I mentioned. And um, and he set up everything. Every time I needed something or whatever, he he set up Team Viewer. He showed me um, mm -hmm. another thing too. I highly recommend. Right? Um, and um, this was a Russian retoucher, right? That showed me this stuff. Why are the so, Russians so good at it? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you you look at all it. like the Russian and Swedish, um, it's like a, just retouchers and photographers. Like, they're just beast mode with it. It's like, if you what? Another another thing. Another thing is the three D Lux panel. Yeah. If you are a videographer or a uh, um. I use 3D LUTs all the time. 3D LUTs, oh, you know Russians created that, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. That. No, no lie. And, no, they did. And, and they took it to the next level, right? The, the guys for the 3D LUTs panel, they actually used some of my work for the, uh, for the, um, for the commercials on YouTube. Really? Um, yeah, they, uh, they came out with the, um, the oh, Dodge that other yeah, that other 3D LUT um, program that's separate. It works. Like a burn. Excellent. It's a little weird. I tried using it. It works. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. Uh, the Dodge and Burn. Um, what else? The, um, uh, 
It's the portrait, the portrait one. I forget the total name of it, but excellent, excellent. Um, and these things, um, you know, goes a long way. We're learning how to, and I'm sure John, you could speak about that too, about understanding how to shift colors with these programs. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure you do it a lot where actually all these programs, all these programs are a spinoff of Photoshop, by the way. Let's just put that out there. All these mm -hmm. things, you don't have to buy none of these and you could actually do things in Photoshop. These programs just make it simple. Let's just be mm -hmm. honest, right? They're like actions. Yes, yeah, like actions. Because that's what a that's what the uh the you know the panels are doing. They are actually running actions and things like this to make it to speed up your workflow. Um and when we speak about workflow, uh workflow is a valuable thing because it it gives you a way of organizing your work, mm -hmm. you know, and how you work. Um, and one of the things that the Russian retouchers taught me was like in Photoshop, when you open Photoshop, Photoshop have your tools to the left and some tools to the right, right? Because you got your, you got your panels to the right and then you got your, um, well, your layers to the right and stuff like that. And then you got your tools to the left. Well, one of the things that the retouchers teach you is why would, if you're a right-handed person, why would you go all the way across to the other side of the screen and grab a tool and start working with the tool? You just move all your tools to the, mm -hmm. to the right side because you're right-handed. That way it just flows naturally when you're clicking something and you have to grab a tool to work. Ooh, that makes a lot of sense. So you put your you put your tools panel on the same side as the layers and everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that way, that way, my eyes when I'm when I'm editing, and I don't take I don't have to take my eye off the subject by going across to direct grab a liquify tool makes or a lot of sense. Or doing <laughs> all this stuff. Everything I'm right handed, so everything is to my right. Mm -hmm. So now and and um and also to. Uh, a lot of people um, struggle with the part of Photoshop. You know, when you turn Photoshop back on, you have to reorganize stuff. Well, they teach you this too, how to set it up. So every time you turn on your Photoshop, when you click on your Photoshop, yeah, it, it, comes in. it stays in mm -hmm. order. If anything ever get bumbled or out of order in Photoshop, you, you know, um, you just basically uh, go in there and adjust and, and do this you know so i see jo josh has put a thing up saying that luts are on photoshop are actually just a package of different adjustment layers compressed into one file actually not true luts are a little bit different luts are actually photoshop a whole LUTs. color profile um even yeah, photoshop like LUTs. A, i yeah. would say LUTs so, is more, i would i would say luts is more like a color grading tool it's a profile, actually. It's a profile that's stamped from whatever that you took. Because to create a LUT, you can't even necessarily do it in Photoshop. You got to be, able, you got to use. It's a whole thing you got to so, create. With LUTs, so, with, so with the LUTs two, creator, with the three uh, D LUTs, you can make your own LUTs. Yeah, you can make so there's, yeah, two different things. Like so, there's LUTs, which are lookup tables, which are they they make certain colors they automatically change certain colors into a different color and it's it's always going to be that way so it'll work mm -hmm. no matter what you what you put it over the photoshop lets um what they're talking about is a bunch of adjustment layers kind of packed down like you 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 use a bunch of adjustment layers you can i, I don't remember exactly the process it's been a while since i did it but you can make a lut and it's like a photoshop lut it's it's not the same thing as like a as LUT like a cube use. as a file right. cube it's not a cube lut. it's not a cube file yeah. it's a different to, thing yeah yeah because to make a, a cube file you actually can do it in lightroom but you mm. gotta it's a whole process you gotta use a whole nother program you gotta plug it you yeah, gotta plug put it. this thing in and then it's gotta put a certain kind of picture that stamps a profile so then mm -hmm. when you put whatever color adjustments or whatever you're going to do to it, 
it stamps onto that profile and that that screen or whatever and then mm-hmm. that's what saves so it's actually like a screen profile it's a weird thing how it it's works. like a bunch of little squares yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it's like it's like mm-hmm. seven squares on both sides but once mm-hmm. you do it though it goes mm-hmm. on everything you can use it on video you can use it on whatever I, with john. I create I my own john. Yeah, I, I, I agree with, with, yes i agree with you john that you create it's, it's a profile because you, you buy these uh like one of prince mason right uh, I'm a big fan of Prince Mason uh, retouching work. Um, he created, he has LUTs that, that you use, like skin LUTs that actually work phenomenal. And, Prince and yeah, that. Prince Mason, yes. I always you, look for good skin stuff. Yeah. Oh, dude, I got like tons of these. I got tons of these um, that I use, like skin LUTs and stuff like that. And you basically get to where you want to be very quickly. I would, I would I would say I would say um, uh, for retouches is you know it's it's more about working working fast and efficient you know yeah. fast and efficient is is the key right here. Uh, I, I, but, yeah, I don't John. Know. I don't know. I, I might do. We'll, we'll probably do one of our once we do another like tutorial session thing. I might do mm-hmm. one on just how to create a LUT. Cause especially, you know, there's a lot of photographers now like myself who do both video and photography and everything. So knowing how to create your own LUTs is a, is a good process to know, to be able to transfer it over the video and stuff like that. Like I have about, I'll say like five or six LUTs that are like my go-tos that I created um, that I use pretty much on all my video shoots. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I dump them, same thing, use them in a lot of my photography stuff to get a lot, especially like that, that real orange and teal look and, you know, the whole Hollywood mm-hmm. look kind of thing. Um, and I played around for years just to get it kind of where it's at. But my thing was getting it like right to where it was, like no matter what the F is going on in the picture, it works. <laughs> and it took a while to figure that out. Um, I actually had to play around with other people's presets and other people this and that and mix things together and figure it out my own and then play around with a bunch of different pictures, dark and light. And then I, I eventually got it. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a thing, man, for sure. I, I, I- I, I, another thing too, like um, I think when you get into the world of retouching and uh, you know like breaking down this myth too, like uh, you have don't, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with photographers that shoot where they don't you know you don't have to do any retouching. Mm-hmm. Um, but but for yeah, me, I'm gonna bring on a photographer later that's like that that he. For, I'm, for I'm actually not shooting anything, but he shoots for, so. For me, for me to let's be clear. If you shoot something in the camera, you shoot something in the camera and you bring it into Lightroom and you tweak even a hair of anything, you are retouching. Hmm. If you make any type of lighting adjustments, anything like that, you're in the world of make-believe, my friend, because Hmm. you do not shoot it like that. You're in the world of make-believe. I agree. And Mm -hmm. retouching retouching is in the world of make-believe mm-hmm. and I, I done met a lot of women i done met a lot of women and no woman wants wrinkles in her face nope facts nope one of the, one of the things I, uh, and, one of the, <laughs> and I'm, I'm gonna break another myth down is there's lots of money to be made with women that don't want those wrinkles Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. because because um, no one wants to be reminded how life has been unkind. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's I mean, this is that's just women in beauty. Period. You know, women. Right. That, that that's the reason why I like sometimes I like editing men more than women because I don't have to do as much. Right. As the opposite. Do all that. Men, you want to actually sometimes add the more grit and grain well, and show the more wrinkles. Because men, and, and that's just the sexes and, and attraction and what attracts the two women. Men are attracted to youth and fertility and beauty and all that kind of stuff. Where men, where women are attracted to more um, guys that are older, that are more established and stat experience and all that. So that's why those, two looks, that's why those images <laughs> propel those types. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting. Like one of the things I learned from uh, from Sue Bryce. Uh, she was talking about the lines in the neck. She was like, I have never in my life taken the lines out of somebody's neck and to, and them told me to to put it back. You know, just, just little stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yep. It, 
people don't people don't care that it's it's i used to be really anti you know editing and and doing all this stuff and i think part of it was i just didn't know how to do it right you know what i mean and but the other part was you know i thought you know i'm i'm doing something wrong by by editing but the more i thought about it the more you know i see it pretty much exactly the same it's for me it, i i i explain it like i'm finishing the job that the makeup started so the makeup is supposed to do some something and you know it's not perfect I'm just finishing that job. I'm just making sure that the makeup is complete. I'm completing the makeup's job. Exactly. And, and I mean, also, it, I'm sorry. This goes back to this goes back to what I was saying. Remember, I said as photographers, we need to know, we need to have an understanding of hair, makeup, because because okay, so we call things dodging and burning. All right. So walk up to a photographer, walk up to a makeup artist, and say, hey. Can you make sure you do some dodging and burning on my uh, on my model? They're gonna look at you like you're crazy. What huh. are you talking about? Contouring. They but you go up to them and you say contouring. So we have to be able to understand. We have to be able to speak in the right terminology so they can understand what we want, right? Mm -hmm. Another thing too is we need to a lot of things. A lot of things that we can uh, do as photographer. What I focus on a lot. After I set up my lights, after I set up my lights, I walk over to the makeup artist and actually check up on the work. Mm. And I actually look at, I make sure that they have the ring light on the subject and they're doing this work. I sometimes mm. I catch makeup artists and they, they're working with no ring light. Mm. And I'm like, why are you doing makeup with no ring light? <laughs> we, I need you to, because my camera see it this way. So use this ring light. Because, and, you know, I start to show makeup artists what I'm looking for as I'm editing the picture so we could prevent some of these things. Like, for example, right, we all know, right, uh, when we are retouching the person's face or whatever, we are looking, we want the makeup to kind of blend naturally, where it blends naturally. We don't like those hard edges when we, where the makeup breaks up and changes like that. We, we yeah, I don't know them. how that became a fad in the last couple of years. The 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 hard creases and the extra like white and blush, and I, I never understood that. Um, but yeah, a lot of them do it. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the cut creases and stuff like that. Yeah, the the makeup artist that actually shot for us last week, she did a lot of that, and I had to go back mm -hmm. and post and, and so, fix a lot so John bring up a good thing. So why is this? Can can we talk makeup for a second? I love to talk makeup. <laughs> so so I'm watching tutorials, right? Did y'all know Kim Kardashian started this contouring thing? I believe hmm. it. I, yeah, man, she started that's so much stuff from. with women's that's beauty. Where, that's where it came from. I believe so. It. So I'm watching her do this contouring, right? And I look and I said, "Okay, all right, watch this." Now let's think about a wrinkle, right? If we were a photographer, right? How would we clear up a wrinkle on the face? One of two ways. I would either, you know, either clone without tool lighting. it out. Without, no, oh, without, not, not oh. editing. without lighting, oh. how would we do it? Softer light, bigger light source. And move the light closer to the subject, right? Mm -hmm. So let's think about a wrinkle, right? A wrinkle, right? What is a wrinkle? A wrinkle is a bruise on the face or like a, a, a abrasion on the face. Mm -hmm. So when light hits it, it makes it makes a shadow. Mm -hmm. if it's, it's mm -hmm. because it's like a bump on a face like mm -hmm. so 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 when you move your light closer this is how you wipe away this right so now i want you to think about it in makeup now watch this so in makeup it use concealer and it use highlighter to lift those shadows mm -hmm. so 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 if you don't want those wrinkles like that you tell the makeup artist to use concealer and highlighter to lift those shadows from underneath the eye. And now you have a better opportunity and a faster way of retouching because you, you took the time to actually have that conversation with the makeup artist to fix it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yep. That's a good one, man. Cause yeah, a lot of times the makeup artists are rushing, um, mm -hmm. especially it, I see two ways with I see makeup artists who are very used to shooting fashion and everything, and they know to rush. 
And then the other is um, makeup artists who are not used to it, new to it, whatever. And they're a lot of times taking too long. You got to speed them up and then they get nervous mm-hmm. and so forth. And they're not doing everything they need to do. So, yeah, man, that's good to really know what you're doing and make up a little bit. And it's important. Definitely. Important, I've, man. I've, I've thought about it because a makeup artist where a makeup artist is going to struggle. I guarantee you every makeup artist know how to apply color well. They they very good with color, but when it comes down to blending skin tone, mm. no. This is going I've to seen be a that. Problem. I've seen it many many times where it separates mm. the good from the bad. Yeah, and and I noticed the ones that are really good at it and learn that quickly are the ones that have work on film projects and work mm. on different yeah, stuff um, uh, compared to the ones cool. that you know learned on you know YouTube college YouTube. <laughs> and, and do weddings and stuff like that like. Yeah. yeah, that's a different. That's a different. That's different. You know, doing weddings versus doing film. Is, very yeah. different. Very yeah. very different. Uh, but yeah, I mean, man. So we're we're coming up on. Yeah, we're about two, two hours, two hours, 10 hours minutes. and some change. So <laughs> we ain't gonna go too much longer. But hey, Carl, we cannot thank you enough, bro. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on, man. You have given a lot of knowledge today, man. Hundred percent. I appreciate everything, especially your humbleness, man, and just how you reach out and you stay connected with people, man. There's been times I know I had talks with you and I was feeling a little like, nah, and you cheered me up, man. It was like, man, get out there, man. F them. You keep doing that. Do that blue and chill look. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so I, I appreciate you, bro. And um, bro, you are so talented, man. And I know the world is, is very much going to find out about you very shortly, bro. You're already on your way. The world already much knows about you, but. You're about to hit that big time soon, man. So just don't forget about the little people. Don't forget about who interviewed you down here, no, a little yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. I wanna, <laughs> absolutely. I want to thank you guys. I want to thank you guys for having me. Um, and actually let me share um, you know, the information that I got a chance to share with people. Um, John, once again, I admire your work. Um, and you know. I love my man work right here too. He he he's a dope photographer too. I, I looked at some of your work. I clicked on your page and I looked at some of your work too, man. You dope, bro. And Thank you. Thank you. um keep doing what you're doing, man. You know what I'm saying? Um and you know, that's the beautiful thing about uh I say this all the time. Photography needs that. You know, mm-hmm. what made hip hop so good back in the 80s because we had variety. You know, mm-hmm. you could you could like Tribe Called Quest. You could like if you like some West Coast stuff, you got Ice Cube. You you have variety. It's Photog- you're saying that, bro, because that's exactly what's going on in photography right now. Photography yes. needs that. Somebody's style gets popular, and then everybody everybody's doing it. it. Yeah, we need we need good variety. Um, you know, photo- uh, photographers photographers. Um, we need. I also say this too. We need bad photographers. Yeah. <laughs> we need yeah. Bad photographers. Oh, that's because, facts. Because if everybody was good, this would really be boring. It, it'd, facts. Be, it'd be hard for good photographers to make money because everybody's good. Facts. You know, it'd, it'd, it'd be facts, we facts, need facts, bad facts. So, <laughs> so yeah, we man. need a new variety. You know, yep. um, and um, you know, I love I love the fact that I'm always learning. If you're a photographer, yes, you should always be learning. 100%. My mentor, my mentor, Rollo Cross, who taught me Photoshop, he said something to me that was very important. He said, shoot and edit. Shoot and edit. Shoot and edit. Why? Because once you get tired of editing, you're going to learn to shoot it right. Mm. Facts. Mm. Facts. Mm. Very much facts. That's, yeah. So, brother, once again, thank you so much, man. Appreciate you, man. We will have you on again for sure. We will keep an eye on your progress. And um, for those of you watching, we will put Carl's information um, in the bottom on well, you know, YouTube and all the other stuff yeah. so you guys can check him out. Uh, we'll have his Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff on there. And, yo, go support my brother. He does amazing, amazing work. And skies are going to be the limit for him and with, with the fashion world and what he's getting ready to bring. I don't think they're ready for it. So yeah. for sure, man. So with that, brother, peace out. Me and Rob, you stay on for a second. Yep. Rob, yeah, thank we'll you, man. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for coming. 100%. Thank you, brother.
So yeah, man. So with that, that marks episode two, man. So that's dose. Not bad, mm-hmm. man. We we getting yes. there, brother. We getting I'm enjoying there. it. This is good so, stuff. So um for those who are watching, uh we already kind of have set up what will be um next week. So let me see if I can share my screen here. Can everybody see my screen? Can you see my Not screen? Yet. Hold on. I don't know if they want to see my screen. There you go. Uh, okay. Uh so yeah, this is who we'll have next week. My boy Pierce. Pierce is a professional male model. Uh, mm. He shoots uh, for a lot of different agencies. Um, I've hired him several times. We actually met on a movie set. Uh, he's an actor as well. And, um, you know, been working with my man ever since. Super, super good dude. Very Another one. Very, very humble man. Easy to talk to guy. And um, Pierce is amazing, man. He's freaking 5% body fat. So. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, ladies love Pierce. But um, but yeah, man, super good dude, man. And what I like about Pierce, he's he's very open. Some male models, you know, you know, designers can get kind of wild and stuff they put mm. them in. And some male models, are like, I mean, I ain't wearing it. And um, <laughs> you know, Pierce has always been open. I've shot with Pierce a bunch of times. Here's some of my photos with him and so forth. Working with Justin, some other things. So um, yeah, man, we're definitely uh going to have a talk with Pierce. I already spoke to him, and um, he's he's uh, excited to come on. And uh, talk a little bit about more of the other side, what it is to be a male model, what it is to be a model in the world and, and um, you know, some of the different things they deal with, some of the things with photographers and, you know, so forth. So I think it's going to be really interesting. Pierce really is international. He is shot for a little bit of everybody. And um, hmm. he works for some major agencies and has been all over. I'm literally just showing a couple pictures out of like, you know, my new level of some of the stuff he's done. Um, and just super good dude, man. Really, really humble. Um, he actually just shined, signed with a new agency out of Philly um, and one out of New York. And, um, you know, getting ready to do some more stuff. So, yeah, man, super, super good dude. So, um, and, and he's also really, really big on his acting career and what he's trying to do with that. So, yeah, man, you know, definitely have him on soon and uh, next week. And we'll go from there. So that's kind of going to be the next show. We're going to get a little bit more of the other perspective, people in front of the camera. And so nice. forth. I promise to keep the show, and and you know we, we promise to keep the show very much based on um, a little bit of everything. It's going to be a little, all kinds of creatives we're going to bring in. Um, I got a director probably that's going to come on after that. And I know Rob's got a few people, and just kind of keep it going, man. So yeah, man, let's do it. Yes, sir. All right. All right. So yeah, um, don't forget to go to the YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications. Um, and Hit that really like appreciate- button. Hundred percent. Smash that like button. Smash it. Smash the like button. But yeah, we we really appreciate you guys uh, for coming through. Everybody that that stayed on. I mean, it's I mean two hour show, and we we've had a bunch of people on here for the for the whole two hours. So we really appreciate everybody who's come through. Seriously. Um, when- shout out to Josh. Shout out to John Harvell. Shout out to SMD, bro. Uh, thank Thanks. you guys, Lisa. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and, and staying a part of this. And uh, yeah, man, let's keep growing. Yep. Yep. So we will see you guys next week. Peace. Same time, same channel.